Yo, what up, what up, everyone? Today I'm making a review on Helia, the dark harpy. I figured it would be a good time to make it since uh, we just uh, got an event where we all received uh, light and dark 3 star tickets and she is uh, by far one of the most popular choices from that ticket. Uh, I'd say Helia or the light uh, Garuda were definitely tied for one of the most popular ones, but I think Helia definitely takes that spot as the most popular one uh, due to her having a little bit more use than uh, the light Garuda in my opinion. So yeah, as for Helia, first of all, uh, where she is good in, so she is mostly used as a defense break uh, setup for a lot of bosses, so this means that you will be using her uh, in stuff like Kairos, in Path of Growth bosses, uh, in Expeditions, depending on your team, as it does have some requirements, and it may make uh, her a little harder to use, but I definitely still use her for stuff like Special Expedition or a lot of these uh, regular Expedition bosses. And of course, uh, the party dungeon, and mainly the uh, raid tab, where she will be the most used for this tree. So yeah, uh, she's mostly used as a setup for defense break, as her third skill allows you to uh, do both a defense break as well as damage taken up. And uh, what teams we use them for mostly, I'd say from what I've been using her, uh, for single player dungeons, stuff like Kairos, Path of Gold, Expedition, uh, I found that a team similar to uh, this, let me try to refresh one ticket real quick, yeah, so for me, uh, I found that Helia is best used uh, with either two damage dealers or one damage dealer and an attack buffer. So for example, this uh, would be somewhat of a team that I would run for a lot of dungeons. Uh, if I see that the element uh, simply does not work, for example, if I'm fighting a water boss, uh, bringing Karambit into there wouldn't make sense. I would uh, swap out for a attack damage uh, increaser. Uh, making Naomi's, for example, attacks way stronger, and the same thing if I'm fighting something of a fire element, instead of Naomi, I would bring Karambit, and he would be the sole damage dealer, but with the defense break and damage taken up from Helia, as well as the attack buff from uh, Bastet, uh, Karambit usually has more than enough damage to clear a dungeon in like 10 to 15 seconds. And yeah, uh, so overall, of course, if you haven't looked at it yet, I'll quickly go over her skills. So her first skill does have anything special, just a regular 165 attack multiplier. Uh, her second skill uh, flaps its wings to attack the enemy target two times and stuns the target with a certain chance. Uh, and the third skill uses ferocious claws to attack the enemy target and each hit has a certain chance to apply defense down and damage taken up. Additionally activates the link skill two times. So she has a 70% chance uh, to defense break and damage attack break and damage taken up rather break. Uh, meaning that you will be looking at a significant damage increase and uh, this is something I noticed that a lot of people miss is that she activates the link skill two times. Uh, what this means is she must be in the soul link plot, uh, otherwise you will not be getting a lot of use from her. And yeah, uh, once she is placed in the soul link slot, uh, this means that instead of defense breaking and damage, uh, damage taken up, effect activating once if she was in a one of the two normal uh, monster spots, she would actually activate her skill uh, two more times, uh, meaning that you have the potential if all of the uh, defaults land to apply level 3 defense break and level 3 damage taken up. And uh, just for some information of what that means, level 3 defense break would be 57% uh, decrease in defense and 36% more damage taken. Uh, these two combined, uh, they increase your damage by way over 100% from a map sound. And it's actually comparable to having a attack buffer instead, uh, meaning that Helia and two damage dealers are definitely still a very viable team. Uh, when comparing to Helia, uh, one damage dealer and a attack breaker, or rather uh, attack uh, buffer. So yeah, uh, for the setups, that's it. 
Uh, now I'm gonna quickly go over the runes that I uh, found work best for her. So of course, uh, Helia being purely used for uh, the defense break and the damage taken at top. Uh, the only stat that really matters for her is accuracy and a little bit of precision to ensure that you actually land the hit. Uh, meaning that four runes themselves are uh, focus is of course the would be the easiest set to get and would be the easiest to optimize, but uh, the set themselves don't really matter as long as you manage to get a uh, really high accuracy and I'd say go even higher. I had a build with like 90 plus accuracy and performed way better than 76, but I didn't save the build for now, so it just got lost. I think it was just one rune change somewhere and it actually brought it up to like 90. So make sure to get uh, as high accuracy as possible, of course, no need to go over 100. And make sure to get a little bit of precision since some bosses do actually have the high evasion stats and if you do not land the hit itself, uh, the debuff of course will not apply either. Yeah, once you have accuracy and precision, uh, other stats are completely up to you. In my opinion, I found that uh, while you can build her for damage, so something like attack, uh, attack slash crit rate slash uh, crit damage and accuracy, uh, I found that HP and defense for some additional sustain actually help her out a bit more, especially in harder dungeons such as raids and uh, the Wind Arachne expedition. And yeah, for the sets, as I mentioned, uh, focus of course will be the easiest uh, to tune your team as you won't need as many accuracy subs then uh, but uh, actually any of the runes you find here will definitely still be decent options especially uh, if you want to do that a little bit extra damage you can go for blade rage fail or swift uh, if you want to go for a more sustained round you can go for energy guard and uh, foresight that is completely up to you just make sure that your accuracy is high and yeah uh, as for Awakening, this is another great thing with Helia. Uh, unlike a lot of Nat 5s and Nat 4s, where you use them in PvP, Helia will not really be used in PvP, meaning uh, you actually do not need to go high with the Awakening monster levels. I don't mind just because I find convenient to use uh, some of the power bonuses and not having to switch some teams for the dungeon, uh, but if you are able to reach the power bonuses for all of the dungeons you want, uh, you can definitely not uh, go higher than the level 5 awakening on her. I think with time, since my power increased and I have uh, enough power to reach the bonuses, I might actually just reset her and bring her down to level 5 as well. Since uh, it seems like a little bit of a waste to go for like 1000 breath of lives and these high essence costs as well as gold costs. To keep her at level 13 so yeah as for that uh, i hope this sort of uh helped you understand how to go about uh, building helia and i really do and hope that you enjoy using her if you have picked her from your ld ticket and yeah with all that said see you in the next one